A very good morning to each one of you. Respected director, members of the faculty, members of the industry, and my fellow students. It's my first time at uh, IIM Rotak, and I'm very pleased to be here. The topic I've been asked to present on is the IoT, Internet of Things, Balancing Expectations and Deliverables. And I must congratulate the team which has put together the agenda because this is very relevant. As you look at next 15, 20 years of how internet will shape things around us. I'm calling my um, talk this morning with you as IOT and selfie. You all, you know, all of you know selfie. How many of you have taken a selfie in last six months? You know, that was never meant to be. When somebody introduced that camera in the smartphone, it wasn't meant to be this device which will take pictures. You will use to take pictures of yourselves. You're supposed to take pictures of everybody else around you. Of course, you could be part of the group photo. So next about 20, 25 minutes, I'll walk you through how technology plays a role in addressing one need or few needs and how do we have unintended consequences of the same technology which by the way throws up more opportunities you wouldn't have cared about the mobile phone battery when you didn't have a cell phone so they got you the cell phone you started using it and then of course now you want to have longer battery life that's how technology evolves and IoT is no different. So in the next maybe a few slides, I'll walk you through what are my impressions as I see this emergence of this phenomena called Internet of Things. What is IoT? Why should you care? What are the challenges I anticipate or we are already seeing around us? And to make it interactive, I'll walk you through a few scenarios and uh, share this with you. As I was introduced earlier, I run a company called Octane.in, Octane Marketing. I'm at, at Mod Gill as my Twitter handle and I would request you guys to take your cell phones out, um, put them on Vibra mode but start your Twitter if you're on Twitter, use that hashtag or hashtag called IOT or hashtag I am Rotak and start tweeting about it right now. You can do live tweets if you like to. This is what I meant with the unintended consequences. Your Facebook walls, social media posts are always filled up with such pictures, amazingly good pictures. But that's what not, that was not the reason why the internet, uh, the mobile phone was given a camera. Let's roll back the clock a little. This is Google's data center in 1998. Uh, the same year I was in California, I used to work for Siegel Systems, where I built the first application for machine to machine communication. But this is where it was, and I've been to this office. Now imagine this is 2015 and uh, I'm expected to talk to you about next 15, 20 years. So in 1998, nobody would have had that second guess on how things will be next 20 years, 15 years. So with, a, with due humility, and that's why I said fellow student, because I'm also a student, I'm also learning as it unfolds in front of us. We are co-passengers in this journey. How it's gonna roll out in next 20 years, 15 years? We, we can just speculate. We can, based on what we have seen so far, we can make early predictions of where we see some challenges, where we see some gaps, and how it's going to pan out. And this is where I need help because I'm used to um, uh, mouse control, but let me see if I can make this work. All right. Well, what is IoT? By now, you may have heard the term Internet of Things. Sounds interesting, but what does the Internet of Things actually mean? IoT is an evolution of mobile, home, and embedded applications that are being connected to the internet, integrating greater compute capabilities, and using data analytics to extract meaningful information. Billions of devices will be connected to the internet, and soon, hundreds of billions of devices. As related devices connect with each other, they can become an intelligent system of systems. 
And when these intelligent devices and systems of systems share data over the cloud and analyze it, they can transform our businesses, our lives, and our world in countless ways. Whether it's improving medical outcomes, creating better products faster with lower development costs, making shopping more enjoyable, or optimizing energy generation and consumption. Here's an example of the big picture. Imagine an intelligent device such as a smart traffic camera. The camera can monitor the road for congestion, accidents, and weather conditions, and communicate that status to a gateway that combines it with data from other cameras, creating an intelligent citywide traffic system. Now, imagine that intelligent traffic system connected to other citywide transportation systems, which get data from their own intelligent devices, creating an ever larger intelligent system of systems. The really big possibilities come from analyzing the end-to-end -end data across that system of systems. For example, let's say the city's intelligent traffic system detects massive congestion due to an accident. That insight can be sent to the citywide transportation system, which can analyze the accident's impact on other city systems. Recognizing the accident is near the airport and two city schools, it could notify those systems so they can adjust flight and school schedules. It can also analyze and derive optimal routes around the accident and send those instructions to the city's digital signage system to guide drivers around the accident. And that's just one example of the potential benefits that can happen when intelligent devices share insight with other systems, forming ever-expanding systems of systems. So essential difference between machine to machine, which we have known for so many years now, communication and IoT is, this is where devices, you add internet to devices, or you add devices to internet. It becomes scalable, it becomes massively um, sort of a transactional in terms of data. So that's the IoT of things, just, just to be on the same page as far as the definition goes. I know this is, sounds like a dream, but a lot of this is already happening in many parts of societies in the developed world. This was more like a enterprise application, commercial application of what IoT would do. But let's look at, let's dream a bit more, because I think dreaming is important, and I'll bring you back to reality check as well, don't worry. This is not a session to hype IoT. This is a session to do a real, brass tax evaluation of where we are. So let's continue dreaming a bit more. This video again.
a day in the life of a consumer with IoT around. Now I know some of you may think this is too far-fetched, but almost 60-70% of the devices you saw in the video are available in the marketplace. You can wire up your life around it. And in India, we'll have a longer time to get there. We still cannot have electricity 24 by 7. How will this work? But the fact is, this will happen in the next 20-25 years in our lifetimes for sure. How many of you believe that this will become a reality in your lifetime? Raise your hands. So almost 80-90% of you feel that this will happen to you. Now what are the consequences of this? This looks very good. It's pretty empowering for a consumer, right? You have control, convenience, connected devices, convergence. All the buzzwords that we grew up with in the last 20-25 years of tech industry are coming to fruition. What are the challenges? But before that, let's discuss why this hype around IoT. It is a hype. It is super, super, super hype. It's the wild west at the moment. Every device manufacturer is doing verticalized integration. There are no, open, there are no set standards. They're still evolving. So right now it's all, anybody who makes a device like this has to do everything from uh, security, system stack, application software, integration in one full go. But the number of devices are supposed to grow to 15 times that, oh, sorry, five times of all smartphones and PCs as of today, that's the number we're talking about by 2020, next five years. Huge. Commercial applications will grow. You see, for example, the bar in uh, green, that's where the massive scale will come. But the other applications will not stay far behind. Consumers will take time, and the reasons for that, we'll discuss it in more specifics. But clearly, there is a huge momentum towards adoption of IoT, and this is the ne next wave of disruption. And hence, as a student who is looking to make a career, or some of us entrepreneurs, we're keenly watching this space to see how it evolves, especially in India. By the way, IoT startups are already happening in India, despite our pessimism about India, and we're still not here. By the way, uh, 4G came out in the world markets in 2009. And we're talking about 4G in India in 2015. So I believe that that gap will shrink a lot more and will become almost real time with tech access and deployment of these gadgets and devices for the networks, but we're not there as yet. But if you look at this data, which is public data, we expect to grow from currently whatever numbers we have to combine all of that 5x in the next five years. Let me just walk you through some more data. But let's before that discuss why is it happening now. The disruption that you're seeing, why IoT is happening today, why it didn't it happen 20 years back is because of the device digital data coming together and connected on the internet. That's creating, your mobile phone is creating the disruption. That, uh, that, that miniaturization of tech, connecting them together and being able to connect with each one of them in a digital format on the network. That's what's creating disruption. By the way, this disruption is not only for IoT. This is how entrepreneurs in India are finding newer opportunities. That is how media has changed. Uh, press conference happens at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on Volkswagen's car scam and scandal. And within half an hour, the press releases go out in India. The media headlines are on. So all of this, if you're a student of media or marketing, this has wider ramifications and implications on how we conduct our businesses, the three Ds of disruption, data, device, and digital. And if you look at through in this detail, why this is happening, there are enabling factors. Because we've been living this tech world, I've been part of the tech industry for more than 20 years, this is second nature for us. But if you're starting out, here's why what's happening here. Terabytes every day. I saw a statistics a uh, year and a half back which said, more video is uploaded on YouTube every 24 hours than all the videos for humanity for the preceding almost all the years except for that one day. The amount of data we are creating, you know, we know about gigabytes, terabytes. What's beyond terabytes? Have you heard about petabytes? Discuss that number. What is the number we create today? And what is the number of, amount of data we'll create in 2020? I'll come to that. But the implications of this, these three, unprecedented access to internet technologies, smartphones becoming more and more available everywhere at price points which are not seen earlier, 
these are all enabling towards the IoT revolution. By the way, we always lag behind in terms of certain aspects of adoption. I don't know how many of you know, but your PC, your laptop is much more secure than your mobile phone. Your mobile phone is not as secure as we, as we speak today. Your apps download can be a Trojan horse through which hackers can get access to all the data you have, the SMSs you've sent, the photographs, and it takes not more than half an hour. We'll discuss that a little later, later. So what changed? What changes for you? I have been asked to talk about jobs and what is the implication of IoT. Anything which can be machine automated will be up for removal. So following instructions is one part of it. This is a slide I borrowed from Seth Godin's linchpin, which says, if you're a creator, if you are doing something new, if you're providing insights, then even in the IoT era, in my view, you'll be successful. So are you a data scientist? Are you a storyteller? Are you a person who has analytical experience, who can build newer models of analytics, who can help us build structure on our data? Those skills will continue to grow, but the simple instructional skills a person takes a receipt book in electricity discom distribution company, goes out in the morning from door to door collecting meter readings and putting it back in the system in the evening, those jobs will not exist. So we'll have disruption. We'll definitely have disruption. We'll have newer jobs though, emerge which will have newer skills and that'll happen. In India, in Delhi, we didn't have a job for a toll booth fee collector 15 years back, right? But we have those newer jobs. So there'll be disruption and the ones who follow instructions will have challenge they'll have to put long more lot more number of hours per day than to people who will have insights their pay will be more and the number of hours they'll have to put every day will be less so even an IT background that'll be important so we have heard about terabytes most of us know what terabytes are the next one is petabyte uh, petabyte and then petabyte and exabyte and beyond exabyte anyone there you go so we'll have zettabyte so currently we are at 1.3 zettabyte by 2016. Yeah. We'll have 35 zettabyte or 40 zettabyte of data in 2020. Let me repeat the slide again so you get the context. Yeah. Terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes. Humanly will it be possible for us to sift through all of this data? We'll have to have automation, we'll have to have newer skills. And by the way, internet traffic to reach 1.3 zettabytes by 2016. So almost 30x of all of the internet traffic as we speak. Are there opportunities for data scientists? You bet. Are there opportunities for algorithm writers? Absolutely. So this is where the transition will be. Data, magnitude of data, 30x in the next five years. Devices, 5x of what you have today, all devices coming together. Digital, of course, the speeds will increase and 4Gs and 10Gs perhaps will happen. In the hierarchy of IoT things, I'm borrowing a lot of research and ideas from different sources to just put together a story and a narrative which will fit into what I'm trying to say, which is think about cautious optimism and not just hype. So physical needs is where a lot of startups will play a part, connecting things together, powering up those devices. Security needs is where how those devices work together, what are the security, architecture, protocols, cryptography, etc, etc. And smart needs is where all of this comes together and on the data you create, the 35 zettabytes, how do you analyze that in real time and make changes and predictions and instructions based on that? Huge opportunity. What do human wants? Why are we liking to IoT experience? Why do we like our smartphones? Because it gives us the freedom, freedom to collaborate, it helps us improve our health, perhaps if you have one of those wearable trackers, and it promises us convenience, 24 by 7, you can be anywhere and talk to anybody. You can change your tickets, I don't know, many of you have flown up on a flight 15 years back, you had to have a physical ticket, and if you have to change that ticket, you have to go before to get that change to the newer uh, flight schedule. No longer the case, you can just be on the way to the airport, and thanks to companies like Make My Trip, you can change your flight schedule, and rebook your ticket and have electronic ticket available to you. So convenience. What we want that to happen in the environment should be seamless, should be personal, should be protected, and should be engaging. It shouldn't be boring, dull, not contextual, which is where mostly our digital marketing is right now. Boring, dull, not engaging. Devices, they have to be anti-malware. 
they have to they should not allow any malware to enter and deploy in those footprints resilience they need to have a toughness they need to be there when you need them identity plus security imagine if you could get access to one of those households through digital keys you know how many of your bluetooth pins are standard pins a device manufacturer makes a Bluetooth device, ships it out, makes a laptop, gives you Bluetooth, ships it out, has a default pin. It's staggering to know that a huge, humongous amount of consumers never bother to change that pin. Do you know the CCTV cameras we have on the IoT security benchmark, they're rated at 3 out of 10, 10 being the maximum. So all the Wi-Fi security, the CCTVs that you have, when you connect them on the internet, there are people who can get access to it. So device security, identity, certificates. Each one of us will carry a personal certificate to authenticate, this is my network, my device, and here is how you can use it. Right now, it's the sites which have publishers, websites have certificates. Maybe there's a need for certificates for each one of us. Data protection, how will the data be used? We all have Aadhaar card, we've given our fingerprints, and we've given our biometric uh, data. Do you know how that will be used? Now all that we don't ma doesn't matter when you're in the non-IoT world, but it plays a crucial role. Your identity could be stolen. So let's move forward. So a few critical issues remain. Network security being one of them. Internet was not supposed to be a secure platform. That's not how it started. The DARPA earnings, the earnings of uh, internet and DARPA were meant to be a protocol where information can flow faster in case of disruption, but security was never an uh, inherent coherent principle in that founding principle. It has changed though. It is still not encrypted. The IoT networks are still not encrypted. You know what encryption means? That for each device, you'll have to issue a, a key and the accepting device or network has to issue it back, public key, private key. And that means computing power, that means some extra investment in each IoT device. All IoT manufacturers in the consumer space are skipping that part right now. Control APIs, no authentication. So if you look at standardized APIs, there's no protocols right now. You have to pull for data. Everybody writes their own APIs. And of course, data rest. What happens when the data flows? How it's shared? Do you know you share many of your things on the cloud? Share documents? Do you know that many of the cloud providers do not keep data separately for separate uh, consumers? It goes into one big cloud data pool. How can that be secure? It gets hacked once, everybody's data comes into play. That's why you, when you hear this device, this site got hacked, everything comes out in the public domain. That's because we have not implemented uh, those uh, cross boundaries and how do you put them on, on the cloud. Very evolving. And of course, bad passwords. So what's the risk? Uh, there's a quote which came out in 2009, I believe it says, personal data is the new oil of the internet and the new currency of the digital world. And what are the sources of error? You can see on the right hand side, software vulnerabilities, hardware vulnerabilities, but also user behavior. Security is 90% human behavior, 10% tech. That's what security professionals always have believed. How many of you would change passwords on your mobile phone every 15 days? How many of you have backed up your mobile phone or your PC in the last one month? Please raise your hand. There you go, less than 10%. Do you see the threat models here? Do you see where the, 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 the disruption will be? And for companies which fall out on this, there'll be a huge price to pay. How many of you heard about electric grid failure? What is electric grid failure? Devices talk to each other, it's fairly automated, and then something goes wrong. One thing doesn't work, it leads to a cascading effect on multiple other processes. The whole grid can come shunting down. So in the traditional power generation, Every grid or every power generation machine was uh, or planters were operating separately. There was no automated controls. When you put them together and somebody can put a hack to it or one of the devices can flip. How many of you had uh, laptops which have crashed or mobile phones which have crashed in last uh, maybe three, four years? What happens when it's part of an IoT and it crashes? Devices will go bad. So we have challenges there. I'd like to play a video again and I'll request my friend to help me out here. Now, we, I shared with you the dream part, how it's going to be, the utopia of connected devices helping you with convenience. Let's watch a video on what happens when your cars are connected. It's not fun to have your two ton SUVs. That's how you drive in the Midwest. New Yorkers don't know how to do that. 
So you hear about the hype about Google cars and automatic car updates on the internet. Nobody will talk about this, but this is the reality as well. This is a publicly sold car in America as we speak. So unless in India you're driving an Ambassador or a Fiat, uh, any car which is which came into production before 2000, most of the cars do have electronic controls in a chip, and it's a matter of time before they become internet enabled. Why? Because you want to have your Wi-Fi access, you want to have your Bluetooth access, and all of them are not tested and secured as we speak as IoT devices by the manufacturer. They're more interested in having the number of devices out for consumer hype than fixing the bottlenecks or the bottoms and, and, and what needs to be checked here. Uh, I'll skip this one because I showed you how a car was hijacked using electronic controls remotely and everything was switched off one by one. Think about the possibilities of this. Think about the catastrophic impact of such open systems which are not secure, which can give access to a simple hacker. In this one, for example, I'll not play this video because I think I'm running a short on time. They are able to take control of traffic controls, by the way. Um, so instead of line wired control systems, the traffic control, the traffic signals, in America, they started putting up wireless traffic signals. And through publicly available data, they're able to hack into traffic control systems. They can make the lights go red and they should be green. Or find out just how easy it can be for hackers to take over the stoplights on your commute and cause chaos. Uh, Don't be fooled by the friendly smiles. Yeah, Ken Weston and Jared Boone are two of the most dangerous men you'll ever meet. Arm them with a laptop and the right radio device from Amazon and... You can tell the uh, FAA control tower at an, at an airport that maybe you're not where you're supposed to be, or maybe there's another airplane that isn't actually there. Not that they would ever do that. Ken's a security analyst for Tripwire, and Jared owns a company that makes programmable radios and clocks. And when it comes to wireless signals... I can make it so that your, your home security system, if it's wireless, um, it, it doesn't um, transmit back. Um, so I can basically disable it. They know their stuff, which brings us to the other day. I uh, thought I would use my computer to, while I was just sitting at a coffee shop, just grab a bunch of stuff in that general range of spectrum mm -hmm. and quickly observed a bunch of random signals which could potentially be traffic monitoring stuff. Jared's not the only one who's been thinking about radio and cellular signals put out by traffic signals. A study out of the University of Michigan released just last month shows traffic lights across the country that communicate through wireless signals are quote, accessible to attackers and use default usernames and passwords that can be found online. The researchers got in with just themselves permanent green lights or see red light green light in our area Longview Salem and Portland all have intersections with stoplights that use wireless signals but public works people in each of those cities tell me their signals are encrypted and they don't use default passwords I wanted Ken and Jared to test whether our local signals could still be hacked, but apparently there's a problem with that being illegal. But we know hackers can do anything they put their minds to, so it begs the question, why rely on wireless if it's so vulnerable? Public works people tell me wireless is cheap. They don't have to put in wires and, you know, hard, hard wire everything and, you know, dig up the streets, for example. When the consumers demand privacy and security, then you're going to start seeing that stuff built into the products. Till then, it doesn't hurt to pay a little extra attention while you're relying on computers to keep you safe on the road. Ian Parker, K2 News. Now, Portland and Salem both told us only a handful of their intersections use wireless. Most cities in our area use hardwired signals to coordinate their traffic lights. So I understand this is part of the formation stage of essentially four stages any team goes through and any tech also goes through. We are perhaps in the forming stage, we'll have to go through a storming and then of course the performing will have some time lag. But a reality check on where we are today and that's where I wanted to show you how things are changing. Um, let's look at this uh, picture for example. Anybody remembers this uh, news article in the last one year? Yes? So this is about Wikipedia refusing to delete this photograph because the author of this photograph 
is our friend himself. So it's a selfie. And unless the author of the photograph says delete, Wikipedia will not delete. And because it's authored by a good friend himself, Wikipedia will not take it out. The jurisdiction, the, the legal framework, the rules, we never, they never thought about this as a rule. They never thought animal will take a selfie and it will be on the internet, on Wikipedia and they will be asked to remove it. So we will go into newer territories where we, what we know about a law and a law framework, cyber security laws, etc. will get challenged. We are going to newer areas. I showed you selfies earlier. This is where selfies will also play a part. I will like narrate a story to you. About two months back, my mom is not on the internet. I have tried my very level best but she doesn't go beyond the mobile phone. And of course my sisters are on the internet and digital cameras, camera phones. And my mom insists that every time my nephew's pictures are taken, that she gets a presented a digital copy. She says, I don't want to see this on tab and computers. Please make me an album and give it to me. If you think I'm the nani worth being given this as a gift, please do it. So every time there are some nice pictures of my nephews growing up years, two years, three years, four years, it's been documented well and you know how we take pictures almost on a daily basis. We don't archive them well, we don't edit them well, we have no time for that to rent, but pictures have been taken. And about two months back, my sister's computer crashed, phone crashed, and she came to borrow my mother's printed albums to see if she can scan those photographs back. There was no backup. She didn't take any backup. Has it happened to you that you've lost some good data but we didn't take a backup? There you go. Many hands have gone up, right? That's what we're dealing with. Our behavior will not evolve as fast as devices. Our human errors will continue to be uh, a challenge to us as we look at IoT adoption. As we look at newer uh, emergence of newer instances, our policy frameworks will be behind schedule, behind contemporary needs. Our IoT device manufacturers will also not have the secure systems. So are we going towards a chaos? Are we going towards cacophony? Will your digital identity be lost? Will it be skimmed? likely to happen but the good thing is we have overcome these barriers when the computers were in, introduced in india people said there'll be no jobs in banks and psu staff members went on a strike but we found a balance but right now there's a lot of hype on the iot and i would encourage you to go beyond that and look at what are the possible options now from balancing expectations in the renewables absolutely these devices will make an impact so either you can be on the pro side and hype and be a marketeer for iot networks and devices and gadgets or you can be part of the pessimistic side, which is it's not secure enough. Security audits, security frameworks, security experts in IoT is a big opportunity for a lot of us to grow and build into. And of course, we'll evolve newer etiquettes. I know we didn't have cell phones 20 years back, so it was very different. And now when you go to a conversation, you have a dinner, you actually expect them to, hey, can we have a conversation? Can you please put your phone upside down? Can we have a good quiet dinner, right? That's those are newer protocols coming in. So expect some newer forms, norms, uh, manners, etiquette coming up in IoT. We'll have newer lingo. Selfie existed, didn't exist 10 years back. Exists as a term now. Maybe next year it'll be part of the Oxford Dictionary. So we'll see a lot of changes here. This is an example of how we evolved, how we found balance between new tech and old tech. We made newer instructions. So we'll find balance. I'm a cautious optimist on things. And I'd like to uh, conclude by saying that uh, um, there is a video you should see. It's called Electric Dreams. It's a movie which came out in 1984. We'll not play that clip here right now. Just, we'll, uh, just take it out as a note. It's a movie which came out in 1984. It's a fantastic tale about a guy who buys a computer to get organized. He goes to buy a calculator. He sold an electronic organizer. And then the lady upgrades a radio shack to a computer. And he brings that computer back and he wires everything up together. And on the first floor of his apartment block moves in a, a young girl. And how computer enables both of them to fall in love plays a part. It's a fantastic tale. And then one day the computer says, she's not in love with you, she's in love with me. And of course it's a fictional tale. It starts taking control of this guy's life.
I mean, it's a fantastic game with a beautiful ending. Like well, Electric Dreams 1984. I wanted to play a small clip, but I think I'm running short on time, so I'd like to uh, see if I can electric. skip that one. Okay. See that, and that's how things are. Dog. No, just a pest. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Back to the Future series. Back to the Future? There you go. So a lot of things actually, we, it's an art. The good thing about human beings is that we imagine, we can create. That distinguishes us from machines, from animals, from other living beings around us. And that's the part which I feel strongly will help us go through, navigate through this maze of difficult situations of turbulence ahead, the IoT chaos as I see it for some time to come. I have given you a link here to uh, a survey, so I would request for your feedback, brickbacks and bouquets together. Um, just drop me a note, just take it down, it's very simple, surveymonkey.com slash r slash I am Rotuk. And with that, I'd like to thank you for uh, having me here, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And I do believe about the positive part about IoT's influence, impact on us as, as human beings. But I like to say, go boldly, uh, but, uh, but not blindly. We should create trust chain between devices, networks, human beings, and make sure that we are living up to the potential of IoT can offer. With that, thank you.